my name is Charlotte Magpie Mama and welcome to my channel. So what I wanted to talk about today was what a few people could have asked me, uh, usually before um, planning their contraception, what's it like being a mum of five? Oh god, <laughs> it's not that bad, not all the time. So what's it like being a mum of five? So my children are um, let's have one, so this is a test in itself. This is one of the hard bits, you know, remembering names, remember names, ages, date of birth. So we've got one, age one, little girl, age four, little boy, age six, a girl, 11, a girl, and 14, a boy. Now, first of all, I'd like to say having small children is so easy compared to having teenagers. You know, I feel like I've got this kind of small children kind of thing going now yeah I've got a rough idea and when you have a small child it feels like the hardest thing in the world it feels so impossible you know especially when you have your first and your second you're just like oh, how do people with the so many children do this it's so awful I can't stand it <laughs> yeah but it turns out when you have a few more and then when as they get older you think actually god having a small child was so easy you know, cause at least when you had a small child, if you didn't want them to do something, you just get them, pick them up, take them somewhere else. When you've got a child that's starting to... A 14-year-old that's kind of big and looking down at you and can now actually pick you up when he doesn't like what you say. <gasps> that is not what I was expecting. A child to actually be able to pick me up and move me. <laughs> that's quite a funny thing to happen. Yeah, so... So, oh, you with your, your small children, you know, these things, times that you find hard are actually kind of building up the extreme skills that you're going to need to deal with a mini man or a mini woman, you know. So, these, these, all these little things, you think they're really hard. Just remember to yourself, it's not hard. It's just building up my skills because once they get older, you, know, you get into those teenage years, you are going to really need those skills. Now, having a, such a wide range of ages, it's, it's, you know, it's challenging. It's, there's a lot of juggling. So for instance, you know, I might be when getting up in the morning, which is like one of our stress points. This is the pain point of my day, getting everybody up in the morning. So I'm kind of waking up my little one. With bed share, so at the moment we've got three in the bed. One third one had moved out into her room. We got an extra big bed. She moved back in. So I like it in here. Let's come back in. So I'm like, oh, this is still a very busy bed. But never mind. So getting up in the morning. So I'm kind of I start by waking up my six-year-old because she's kind of closest to me. Easy to wake up. She's very good at getting up, getting dressed, getting sorted. Brilliant. I get up and I go wake up my 11 year old then. So I'm going to wake up, wake up. She's she's good at getting herself organised, ready. Takes a look. Now she's getting older, she's getting in, she's on the turn, which is what I like to call them, you know, when they're kind of in that tween age, moving up from being a child to kind of being a young woman and heading towards teenagers. So she's a little bit more sleepy in the morning, you know, she's like, mm, I'm not ready, I'm getting up. And she's Nicola, not getting up. So. She has a few kind of, are you up yet? Are you up? Are you up? Are you up yet? Before she's actually up and ready. And then there's the teen. I just kind of I go up. It's the first wake. Right, morning. Time to get up. Are you awake? Now, the thing is, he always claims that I never wake him up at 7 o'clock. And I always wake him up at 7 o'clock. So either we're having some kind of sleep conversation. Uh, I don't know. But, so I just have to push his down. Are you awake? It's time to get up. Are you up? <laughs> if you've watched my other video, so this is when I start with a nice voice, 7 o'clock. I've got a time to get up. <laughs> you can watch the video to see what really happens. <laughs> Not of him, though. It won't ever be shown. It, won't ever, it doesn't want to ever be seen in my videos. But never mind. So then I go back downstairs, and then I start to um, wake up the four-year-old. So generally kind of, wake up, wake up. And I try to leave the babe to last the one-year-old. Because as soon as she wakes up, she always wants milk without fail. So I'm just like, trying to leave her to last. So, trying, so, I do, so I've got everyone awake and I start to do my makeup and get up and everything. Anyway, and the thing about 
So the thing about kind of dealing with all these different ages is you kind of, so you speak into your children in kind of different ways. So with the baby, you just go, like, oh, get up, up you get, up you get, time to get up. And then the older you go, oh, are you ready to get up now? Are you ready to get up? And then the six-year-old, you go, right, come on then, let's go get our uniforms on. And then with the older ones, so the 11-year-olds, like, right, come on, it's time to get up now, we need to get ready for school. And then the older one, you say, okay, are you, are you gonna, are you getting ready for school now? It's time for us to get up. So your voice kind of slightly changes and then kind of, the where you are with each person can room with all of them and then you've got the elders kind of wrestling the little ones to ground and then the little ones there and you know you kind of have to do that kind of quick change over voice and you go are you okay and you go right stop doing that you need to stop that are you okay stop doing that you need to stop doing that so you go you're constantly oh I'm a good mum I'm a bad mum I'm an angry mum I'm a happy mum so you've got a kind of a little bit of a oh so you get all over which can be a little bit can be a little bit kind of um yes it can be a little bit exhausting sometimes because you're having to put a lot of energy out there um and of course you know with having a large family i'm just gonna I have to be really organized i have to be really organized i plan all my meals plan my shopping all you know really perfectly <laughs> i can't even say it i can't even say it without laughing no i don't do any of that i kind of have a rough idea i have a rough idea of what we're going to be eating uh, a lot of what we eat kind of comes down to what i want to eat and as they're getting old as well then they're getting more fussy and Turns out you can't force a 14 year old to eat. I was just like, you know, oh, I remember when I was younger thinking, oh, yeah, why can't you just make your child just do what, you know, teenagers, just make them do it, just make them do it. <laughs> yeah, make them do it. <gasps> yeah, that's how I get picked up and put to the other side of the room. No, I'm not eating that. Oh, why is your food so weird, Mum? <laughs> I get a lot of that, unfortunately. Yeah, so, so. Unfortunately, I've found we've had to start kind of cooking separate meals as well. So my teen that's very particular about what he has, so he'll have kind of different stuff. And then the little ones, the I try to make everyone have the same as us. Make <laughs> I try to um, I try to offer everybody the same as us, and kind of hope that they'll eat it. And sometimes they will, and a lot of the time it kind of depends how hungry people are. Or you might find there's kind of if I like to do meals where there's like different components, there's a little bit different each thing. So you might find that they'll eat one or two components, and maybe not quite like the other as much. So that's kind of how we do our meals. I have a rough idea of a meal plan, but I've never been able to stick to it. You know, things change and vary so much. You think something's going to happen, then because there's so many of them, someone will say, "Oh, well, I want to go to my girlfriend's house," or oh, "I forgot, I'm going to go swimming," and just like. Okay, so meal times are going to be at five o'clock, quarter past six, eight o'clock. So there's a lot of that going on, and it's just gonna, it's just gonna get even more exciting <laughs> as they all get older. You know, like if I think it's exciting now, challenging, interesting, traumatic now, then you know as they get older, it's just going to be even more the dynamics of everybody. You know, having older, much older ones and younger ones. You know, there's always going to be people going through difficult stages, people going through what well, stages a little bit easier. Um, some children, you know, you tend to find the children that are kind of being the easiest don't always get, you know, as much attention as they deserve because they're just going to be the easiest. And the ones that are being a little bit more challenging that day or that week, they're getting all the attention because, you know, you have to kind of put your energy into kind of getting them up and moving or, you know, whatever they need for that. Um, and school, school that's tricky as well, you know, at the moment. So I've got my four-year-old's going to be starting starting primary school in September, which is not keen about at all. I'm not quite sure how that's going to go. And then, you know, that's going to be that's going to be sad for the baby because, you know, she's just getting to the age where she's pl they're playing together, they're having such fun and it kind of breaks my heart a bit that I'm going to be taking away a playmate. Um, and then my 11 year old she's going to be going to upper school so there's going to be all those changes so my September is going to be crazy because I'm going to be doing the kind of staggered going in with the four-year-old and then the kind of the challenges that you know you get some starting upper school you know how she's going to get there making sure she's safe making sure she understands what she has to do and the kind of the challenges of the exhaustion that they'll have coming back and then there's my eldest who he does an um, alternative provision at the moment, so he does a little bit of, he does a bit of normal traditional upper school, and then he goes to an alternative place as well. But then he's been, you know, there's ch chances that he might be able to go do an apprenticeship. 
so that would be another totally different new thing for him to try so that's three children that you know could possibly be having big changes in september oh my gosh it's just hit me how traumatic my september's gonna be oh god i better have a blooming good holiday because i'm gonna need it aren't I? <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm gonna I might have to do a bit of deep breathing now because i'm just like <gasps> Yeah, so there's all those kind of challenges going on. And another kind of challenge is in bedtimes, you know. And this is one thing that you just kind of forget about as well when you have children. You know, you think, oh, I'll get them into a bedtime thing. I don't really do a routine. We do more of a rhythm. Yeah, so the, the challenge of kind of bedtimes is that you forget about is um, they're all different times. So you get yourself into the idea that, oh, well, at least all my children will be in bed by asleep. To, well, they'll probably be asleep at least ni by nine o'clock, hopefully, you know as the maximum and you think oh yeah then I'll have a couple of hours to myself but actually as they get older you know you've got all these different times so the young ones they are usually all asleep by nine o'clock now but you know the 11 year old now now she's starting to she's not sleeping so much at night she's nine o'clock she might just kind of come and potter in and go oh can I have a drink can I do this and you know she's not going to sleep till later and then you've got the teen who's wanting to stay up much later and you know we'd had a bit of a time where he was just like getting out of bed he goes up to his room but it was like getting out of bed at 12 o'clock and going i'm really hungry and going downstairs for a snack and i'm just like what happens to this who should not be i'm like just to admit the parenting rules i'm sure they say all children must never have a snack after. children must never eat after midnight it's like gremlins it's just, it's just the same result though you know Children going downstairs, and you don't want a child loose downstairs, you know, in the middle of the night, because what's going to happen then? The internet's going to be back on, there's going to be food everywhere, because they're not going to tidy up after themselves. It's going to be cooking bacon and eggs, it's going to be smoke, it's all kinds of things that weren't ever mentioned in the When You Have a Baby book. I think I might need to write my own When You Have a Baby book and, you know, inform people there's these little extra things have you thought about that <laughs> this should be the fertility box when you're planning your child please know that the lack of sleep won't be just for the first few years you're going to get it until you're they're 18 and then when they're 18 then they're going to go out night clubbing and then they won't come back till three or four in the morning and you'll be sat in your bed going oh, where's my child where's my child are they okay are they okay if they come back at all unless they're falling asleep in a friend's I'm taking it too far now. My eldest is only 14. I'm just thinking, I'm thinking to what I was like. <laughs> I don't want another me. <laughs> oh no, oh no. That'd be far too much. So, yeah, so having five children is interesting, fascinating, traumatic, stressful, and brilliant. Sometimes, yeah. You know, you know, you can't, you can't beat though. You can't beat all your children being there. You know, when everything's going well, it's going amazing. When you're going on a holiday and it's all brilliant, you know. Sometimes you know they're all going in different directions. I'm that this hard work. <laughs> I don't go first. I don't go for first. But you know, in general, you know, it's amazing. It's busy. It's exciting. You know, it's never boring. It's always interesting. Um, you know, I can wake up and there's a party. There's always a party. Yeah. I come home from somewhere, come home, there's a party, because there's so many of them, it's always a party. Sometimes it's a party, sometimes it's the kind of party where there's people in the corner crying. Sometimes it's the kind of party where there's someone lounging around and won't get up. Sometimes it's the kind of party where you don't get any food because it's all gone when you get there. Sometimes it's the kind of party, totally trashes your house, clean one second, next minute, Things are everywhere. But, you know, it's a party nonetheless. And, you know, everyone loves a party. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so I recommend having five children. Go on, do it. It's easy. You know, you, I think that you get an extra superpower with every child. You know, when you've got one, everything's so hard all the time. When you get two, again, hard. You've got to, you can't just, you're not just mobile, you know. You've got to take an extra person. A third... Mm, actually, it's hard, but, you know, I've got used to it now. I kind of know what I'm doing. Fourth, just comes along for the ride. Fifth, 
Yeah, Fifth loves what's going on. It's so exciting. You know, where do they look first? So many people to carry them, hold them, hug them, play with them. Brilliant. So, so yeah, so if you're thinking about having a fifth child, I say go for it. You know, what's the worst going to happen? I can start a special club, you know, of mothers of five sat in the car and shake. And anyway, do you ever watch the, the people with the, how many children they've got now? 18? 18 children, the Radfuss? Now, they are iconic parents. They look like they're having an amazing time always. So organised, you know. So if you want to see what a big family looks like, go check out them. You know, they're my, they're my kind of, they're my mentors. I, if I'm thinking I'm having a bad day and all these children, you know, I just watch a bit of them and go, do you know what? I'm having a pretty easy time. I've only got five children. I could be having 18 children. Hmm. Maybe I should mention that to my husbands. Anyway, love to hear about your families. You know, how many children have you got? How many is how many's too many? Have I taken it too far? Have I not got enough? Should I get should I have a few more, you know? The more the merrier, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, just press the subscribe button and I'll see you again soon. See you later. Bye!